Very often, our faith in what is beyond us is rooted in what is before us. Part of our work of growing in our faith is developing the capacity to see the extraordinary in the ordinary. And this is why so often we talk about the elements of creation, because we understand that through the elements of creation, the creator is revealed. And so when we look at our spirituality types of earth, which is grounded and realistic and rooted into that which God has created, or we look at the spirituality type of wind or air of the Holy Spirit that hovered over creation in the beginning, that is open to the newness and the ideas of the Holy Spirit, or we look at water and the symbolism of water in our sacred stories and how we can allow God's love to flow through us. And we can also look at fire, that bursting forth of that energy and that passion around God's justice to be in our world. And of course, in our liturgy, we use all of the elements of earth to tell the sacred story of our salvation. And so, of course, we have the wine and we have water. And we also have oil, which is used in our baptism, and also when we anoint those who are sick. And of course, fire shows up in the ashes because we have burned the palms from last year, so that when we place these ashes on our foreheads, we are understanding the healing and the purifying nature of creation and of our Creator. And so when Jesus talks today, he says several very important things in our story. And one is that he calls himself the Son of Man. And that's not a term that's used in all of the Gospels. And it is important because it reminds us of the stories in Genesis. Of he calls Son of Man means son of a human. So in that phrasing, Jesus is really saying, I am completely human. I am like you. Now we also know that Jesus is fully divine, but he's claiming that he is made of the same stuff that you and I are. With the whole first creation story, when God created Adam, or the first human. And so we know in this story that Jesus is claiming something very real. And it also reminds us of the dirt, that in the second creation story, when God took the clay from the earth, and breathed and created a human and breathed the Holy Spirit into that person and that person became alive. And so we know through the dirt, it is something that indeed life can come from. And so in our story, we can often think about this as a new creation. That when Jesus took the dirt and he added spittle to it, he took something that was latent in our creation something that hadn't yet been fully developed until Jesus walked the earth and offered us a brand new way of looking at things. And that new creation was our spiritual eyes to see the presence of God, to see the presence of the extraordinary in our ordinary lives. And so he is asking us to be a part of it because as you'll notice in the story, Jesus created mud out of this dirt and then ask the man to go and wash in the pools. And so this is the part that's really brand new, is that our healing and the opening of our spiritual eyes is something that's initiated by God, but that we have a role in it. And that's pretty profound. And when we look at the story, and Jesus heals this man and sends him off to the pools to wash and to be able to see and to claim his sight, the conversation goes way off track. And all of a sudden, the Pharisees and the parents and everybody's arguing and saying, well, Jesus, tell us who was really sinning here. And Jesus refuses to go down that bunny hole because he knows that that's not useful and that's not the point of the story. So rather, Jesus says, blindness is a human condition. It is not a sinful way to be. The only thing sinful about our blindness, about not opening our spiritual eyes, is if we attach to the blindness, if we refuse to see, if we refuse to open our eyes, or if we think our darkness is actually the light. 
That's the only sinful part in being blind. And so our Lenten invitation for us today is to look at the dirt in our lives and to figure out how we can let that go in this particular time. Because what we learn from the second creation story is that Jesus took dirt, God took dirt and created from it. So we can look at the dirt and the darkness in our souls or our hearts or our minds and see it only as something of giving something God to God that God can work with. So I invite you to think about what the dirt in your own life might be, the darkness that you're holding on to, and allow yourselves to let it go. And that might be the fear that you're experiencing right now. Or it might be the anxiety. It might be the closed-mindedness. It might be those unkind thoughts that you might have for others. It might be your desire to make the other, those who have the virus. It might be hard places in your life that you need to let go and let God hold and create something new from. For we look at the clay, the dirt of our lives, as what God has to work with to make a new creation. And so when this blind man could see, he responded. He responded with joy. He didn't ask why. He didn't understand why. He just said, I was blind, and now I can see. And he professed his faith. And so often that happens with us, that we have to be able to, as you notice probably, the blind man did not seek Jesus out. But when Jesus finds us, it is our work to open our eyes, to go to the pools and wash clean and allow God to have created and for us to live into the new creation. Now the image that I think about so much when I read this, when I began working with these texts, was actually from our Hebrew text. And it was when Samuel so trusted in God that God would reveal to him who the next king would be. And so you look at that, and of course David was the last one, and all these other sons came by and Samuel probably really was beginning to wonder, well, do I keep trusting? Have I just missed the message? But he continued to trust because he knew that God would offer him and the new king, the abundant life that God wants to offer to us. And the visual, the visual in Samuel that I love is that when David came, it wasn't that Samuel anointed him with a little bit of oil. It was a bold and clear statement that you are indeed the chosen one. And so Samuel took this horn of oil and poured it over David's head. And you can just imagine it going through his hair and on his forehead and in onto his shoulders because there was no mistaking that he was the anointed one, that the Holy Spirit had come upon him and he was called to do God's work. And of course, from David, from that lineage comes Jesus, and Jesus was anointed by the Holy Spirit in his baptism. When the heavens opened up and he wasn't anointed with oil, but God's direct voice that this is my beloved. And in each one of our baptisms, we are connected to both of those anointing. When we are met by and anointed by the Holy Spirit to be God's and brought into the abundant life. And so the blind man became a disciple just as we heard in Psalm 23, he became a sheep of the flock and was brought into green pastures. And so the image that I want to leave with you today is that in many ways in our baptism, the Episcopal Church has tamed it a bit. And we put a few little drops of water on the baby's head. And it's three tiny little drops. And then I take my oil. And I put my finger in it and I make a small cross on the baby's forehead and I say, you are marked as Christ's own forever. And it's true and it's real and your soul is changed and you have been anointed. But what God is actually inviting us into is abundant life. And we are to feel the oil of gladness and we are to live as the children of light. And we're not to be squint our eyes at the light, but we are rather to be the light in the world 
and particularly in our world now where there seems to be a lot of darkness in our fear and our uncertainty and our vulnerability, it is our work to go out and be the light in the world. And so I want to remind you of your baptism. And as you see me pour this oil, and it's not just this little mark on your forehead, this is the oil of gladness which is flowing into your being. So imagine this, imagine the scent. This actually has lavender and it's a wonderful scent, but this is healing oil for all that needs to be healed in your soul, for all the dirt in your heart and mind that needs to be remade into a new creation. Let this be the abundance you will grow into. be clothed with the oil of gladness and be the children of light in our world.